Let's talk rubrics with warp flamers, powerful sorcerers with arcane tricks, and the psychic might of Magnus the Red himself, with an overview of the Thousand Suns army list that have been doing very well post data slate, including taking down a truly enormous tournament. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Thousand Suns, and in this video I thought we'd do an overview of a few of the army lists and the armies that have been bringing home the wins for the Cults of Magic recently. Thousand Suns were an army that kind of escaped attention in the Balanced Data State, I feel like Games Workshop just broadly felt like they were doing okay. Their tournament stats did seem to back that up, win rates were around about 49%, the occasional big event win and most of their armies tending to focus on a lot of the units that I think Thousand Sons players would prefer to be at the heart of the list, broadly Rupert Marines backed up by Sorcerers and Magnus. There are the unique choices like the Zangor units, the Mutaliths, and the Scarabacult Court Terminators maybe being a bit more niche, though it's perhaps not the worst that they might be seen as the supporting units. I feel like maybe just on the wish list, perhaps a very small points cut to Scarabacult Court Terminators to get them a little bit more online with the rubrics. That perhaps might not have been the worst idea. Since the balanced data state low, they've broadly been doing fairly well. I'd say arguably the only real change that they got was a bit of a restriction as to what demon data sheets they could borrow. Just adding in random loan operatives like the blue scribes would now need a unit of horrors of some sort, making those choices a bit more niche. Given that several competitors got nerfs though, things like world eaters and a whole load of armies at the top of the tree in Warhammer 40k, they're perhaps in not the worst place to capitalise. Initially, for tournament stats and data since the data slate, they're doing kind of well, around about a 51% win rate, though one of the lesser played armies at grand tournaments right now. I would argue that Thousand Sons are perhaps one of the armies that's a slightly higher skill faction, as they often have been in the past, loads of options available, and really quite big choices to make with how you spend those cabalistic rituals, but with an army that's kind of slow and maybe not the most enormous damage output without big combos going on, you really do need to make some big commitments and know the right option to pick in the right situation. In terms of actually winning things though, they've been doing rather well. They've won three different events since the balanced data slate, including a huge one with 246 players. I thought it would be interesting to see what people are using with success for the faction, and talk about a few of the common staple units, or ones that are notable in each list as we go along. Starting out by far the biggest win of the Thousand Sons was this list by Noah Neuendorfer. First at Frontline Gaming is Cherokee Open. Going eight wins and one loss and taking down really quite a lot of the scary factions in Warhammer 40k. Beating Demons, Tau, Guard, Custodes, Necrons, Sons of Sanguinius, Blood Angels and Knoptek Court Necrons in the final. Only taking one loss along the way to an Orcs list with Gazgore, Mozrog, a Squigasaur boss and a few other bits. Despite that, they were still strong enough to make the top cut and then the top eight did a playoff. The list starts with Magnus the Red as just about every competitive Thousand Sons army list does these days. An awesome big fast buffing unit in the Primarch, and certainly the scariest damage dealer of the army. I'll talk about him in just a second. Then there's Araman with his free Kabbalistic ritual once per game, an exalted sorcerer with the teleporting Umbralific Crystal, two sorcerers on disc, one having the Lord of Forbidden Law, they're the ones that grant the 4 plus invulnerable save to their units, and an infernal master with Arcane Vortex, the one that amps up his psychic shooting. Then for squads for those to lead, there's two units of 10 Rubric Marines and one squad of 5. All of those taking max Warp Flamers, maybe not too surprising there, they do do just quite a lot more damage than the Bolters do, even if they don't have quite as much range. I guess that means a couple of the characters will be running solo, given that there's just not that many Rubric Marines about. I feel like Araman will be quite at nice in a big unit, given that he's plus 1 to wound. Round off the list, there's two units of 2 Chaos Spawn and a Mutalith Vortex Beast, the spawn can be quite nice cheap chaff units, quite good for doing secondaries or screening and things. The Thousand Sons version is tougher than most, getting a 5 plus invulnerable save, which is kind of what you want in a cheap unit that regenerates like that. And the Mutalith Vortex Beast can put down some firepower in the midboard, and also increase the range of cabalistic rituals if needed. Overall certainly feels like an army list that's really quite skill dependent, as with the rest of the Thousand Sons to be honest. Lots of units that can move kind of slowly, and you need to have in the right sort of positions. The enormous centerpiece of Magnus that you'd have to keep safe, but also make sure that you get enough damage out of him. I feel like this list in particular seems to go heavier on the chaff units compared with the majority of Thousand Sons out there, extra Zangors and Chaos Spawn. To be honest, I feel like this kind of demonstrates that Zangors aren't maybe quite as bad as the internet seems to think. Not really much more than cultists, and then they do get objective control too. 
plus a bit more durability with their toughness 4 and their 6 plus invulnerable save. In any case, it's a massive achievement to take down such an enormous tournament like that. You're guaranteed to be playing multiple really good players who know their armies inside and out. Starting out with a look at a few units, first up it's hard not to talk about Magnus the Red, 440 points for the Demon Primarch, a big 16 wounds, toughness 11 and a 2 plus save, though at 440 points I wouldn't say that his standout durable, you certainly don't want him eating the firepower of half an enemy army if you can avoid it. Just for the sheer amount of force and threat that he can bring though, he is pretty standout, he's got two enormous psychic powers that he gets plus 1 to hit and wound from, from his own boost, then Psychic Melee that does the same, so he's basically just enormously threatening in between the two, can tear a big chunk out of an enemy army. His aura can amp up the Psychic Shooting of nearby Thousand Suns, and for his boost you can either give him minus 1 damage, which I would see as the default, or maybe boost the movement if that makes more sense on a given turn. Basically as a massive focus for the list, it's really kind of rare to see a competitive Thousand Suns army list that doesn't feature him. Quite beyond his own data sheet abilities as well, he's also perhaps the most efficient unit to focus a whole load of the cabalistic rituals or stratagems on. Devastating sorcery for one CP gets you to reroll all hits and wounds with his already dangerous psychic damage, an enormous boost on already good shooting. And then just about any of the cabalistic rituals are pretty great on him. You might be able to remove enemy armor saves, get extra stratagems if needed, or perhaps even temporal surge him across the map. Moving 14 inches, then 14 inches again it could be enormous and get him lines of sight on things that he wouldn't normally be able to reach. Otherwise, as an interesting unit in that list, the Zangors give you a chaff unit of 10 models for the toughness 4 and a 6 plus invulnerable save. Maybe not too bad for a defensive profile for 65 points. The ones in that winning list were using the Zangor blades with the strength 5 and AP 1 attacks, so perhaps enough to bully lighter infantry units but not doing too much more than that. They do get a few fun abilities to help with their normal things, the chance to farm cabalistic ritual points, re-rolling battleshock tests to make them oddly reliable objective holders, and re-rolling charge rolls might save you a command point in a pinch. Moving on to our second list, and this one was another winning list that won a tournament called Game Night GT, this one by an Anthony Limeberry. This one went 5-0, beating Grey Knights, Dark Angels, Grey Knights again, Tau and Hypercrypt Necrons. Again, a fair few sort of similar features in this one. There's Magnus the Red and Araman, this time on a disc. The Infernal Master gets the Umbralefic Crystal this time. And then there's one Exalted Sorcerer on disc and two regular Sorcerers, one with Arcane Vortex. Otherwise, there's four units of five Rubric Marines for the characters to escort. Again, there's more characters than there are Rubrics. Two units of three Zangor Enlightened, cheap units with the Great Bows to do objectives. A Thousand Sons Rhino to get some of those Rubik Marines where they need to be. And then perhaps the most interesting feature about this list is that it goes heavy on the Demon Engines. Three Forge Fiends with triple Ectoplasma Cannons. 135 points each for some general purpose firepower. Again, certainly some staple units there, though it is cool to see an army with really quite a big different element. Next up, just taking a look at those character data sheets. Araman, the Master of the Rubric, does seem to be almost as auto-include as Magnus in these lists. 130 points just for a very effective sorcerer. He has a little bit of his own damage output and comes with three cabal points built in for those rituals. Otherwise though he just has two pretty helpful good boosts, giving you a plus one to wound for the unit that is leading. Really quite nice with mass warp flamers, plus a free cabalistic ritual once per game that could give you one of the really high value ones for free, maybe throwing out a random extra doom bolt or perhaps even more critically, just removing saves from a key target for his Warp Flamer units to burn to death. Otherwise, the Infernal Master is a staple as well. Perhaps his most interesting thing is giving you just a fairly enormous flamethrower type attack. Its Screamer Invocation gets you 2d6 auto hits at strength 6 AP2, pretty much like a Warp Flamer on steroids there, and then has a small amount of close combat and a glimpse of eternity to change one of his dice to an automatic 6, could be handy to get an auto wound or pass a save for him. He gives you sustained hits 1 for his unit's damage, which is kind of oddly unhelpful with Rubric Marines. Often a lot of them want to take Warp Flamers, and that means it's just not that great for those. I suppose it might help out occasionally though if they wind up in combat. Perhaps one of the tempting things to take with him could be Arcane Vortex, as we saw in the first list. This one gives you plus 1 strength and plus 1 damage of any psychic weapons he has. Not bad to make that Screamer Invocation just extra nasty. Their far scarier strength 7 and damage 2 will be blasting through a whole load of space marines and it helps out with his melee as well. 
Otherwise, there's the Exalted Sorcerer options, some slightly more generic smite abilities. Both variants can give you a 4 plus invulnerable save for your units. The regular one allows you to set up slain models from the dead. I thought I'd mention that Umbralefic Crystal here, a once per game teleport that can jump you somewhere else on the battlefield. Could be kind of handy if you need to do secondaries. Or just deploy a full squad of Rubik Marines with Warp Flamers to roast some enemies. Or maybe set up on a midfield objective somewhere with good overwatch. Otherwise the Sorcerer on disc has a few similar things. A very slightly different psychic attack. And he trades out the Resurrect Bodyguard's ability for slowing down enemy units. Can be really quite big to half moves and vans and charges. Potentially keeping one enemy unit out of the game. Seems to be at least a fairly common place to stick Lords of the Forbidden Law. Again, could be good on a big unit of Rubrique, allowing his units to do a second cabalistic ritual, even if one's already been used somewhere else in the army. It means that you could throw out two Doom Bolts if necessary, or strip multiple saves from units, or things like that. Finally, beyond characters, I did think it was interesting to see some Forge Fiends in that previous list. 135 points for a big scary Zinchian Gong Turret. These guys might not hit quite as hard as the Chaos Space Marine version with their big dart packs, devastating wounds, and their big stratagem access, but they do cost massively less at 135 points, and are kind of similarly durable. A whole load of strength 10, AP 3, and damage 3 attacks are quite general purpose, and 3 copies of the blast special rule means that they can actually do some surprisingly good work against bigger elite infantry units or hordes. Their debuff rule I'd rate as okay as well, that one will mean that you get to nominate one enemy unit for a minus 1 to hit in the following turn. That could get to be a serious annoyance factor with three of the things on the table. You might be able to debuff a bunch of enemy units, even at the same time while you destroy others. Next up, moving on to list three for the Thousand Suns, and this is won by someone called Albios, using it to take third at Art of Warp Grand Tournament. This one not quite undefeated, it did have a draw against some Hypercrypt Necrons, but otherwise, in order, it beat Dean Silicult, Custodes, Orcs, and the Gladius Dark Angels as the last game. Again, a few familiar faces in the HQ section. Magnus the Red and Araman once more. Two Infernal Masters with their big torrent attacks, one with Arcane Vortex, and then two Exalted Sorcerers this time, the ones that can resurrect units, one with the Umbralific Crystal and one with Lord of Forbidden Law. The main focus of this one seems to be just absolutely massive rubric spam. There's two units of five of them with Warp Flamers and a single Soul Reaper Cannon. And then three units of ten of them, again all with max warp flamers besides one single soul reaper. Quite an intimidating amount of bodies and objective control on the board there. That's to be a big 40 space marines, half of them sporting a 4 plus invulnerable save. And really quite big overwatch threats just about whenever you move up to them. Looks like a couple of squads get rhinos to use as battlefield taxes. I guess theoretically you could do a little bit of shooting out of the top with an infernal master if they happen to be the ones embarking. For this list, it seems hard not to focus on any data sheet but the Rubik Marines themselves. 105 points for 5 and 210 per 10. Again, these guys are pretty much ubiquitous in Thousand Suns armies. It is good seeing them strong given that they are the iconic battle line of the army. The Space Marine bodies, their durability is okay. Two wounds with a 5 plus and vulnerable save, which could be relevant against higher AP stuff. As we've seen with army lists so far, the Warp Flamer really is the big focus here. The majority of the squad usually armed with that, each for a Torrent Flamer with AP minus 1 at 12 inches, and then their own data sheet gives you multiple buffs to make that better. With their Bringers of Change, they get two reroll wound rolls of one, going up to four reroll wound rolls if you happen to be barbecuing something on an objective you don't control. And the Icon of Flame even makes that better, meaning that if you get critical wounds, you get an extra pip of AP, putting them up to AP 2 for a good proportion of their wounds. That would be really quite relevant, particularly if they're wounding things on a 5+. plus. They're largely going to be better against anything that's toughness 4 or has lower saves, though there's enough volume fire there to even threaten tougher stuff, and it certainly gets worse with certain characters attached. If you have Araman for the plus 1 to wound and be able to activate that full wound reroll, you'd still be wounding things like Imperial Knights more often than not, and half of your successful wounds will be at AP 2, and it all ignores cover. It seems that the biggest debate for loadouts is whether or not people want to take the Soul Reaper Cannon. Some lists do and some lists don't. I think I'd likely be one of the people to take it myself. Who average 4 hits at 24 inches at strength 6 AP minus 1. And the attacks get devastating wounds as well. Generally going to be an upgrade on the damage output of the Warp Flamers most of the time. The main downsides is less overwatch. 
and not ignoring cover, both of which are weaknesses, admittedly. In any case, they're a pretty core unit to the army, given that they're the ones to escort the vast majority of the characters, and the Thousand Suns sorcerers are good enough to spam, and how you get your cabalistic ritual points on the board. Finally, for the fourth list, I did talk about this the other week on the channel. This one was by Ryan Carra, who used its take first at the small Kairos Dynasty GT, going 5-0 against a small tournament of 20 players, all very appropriate with Zinch getting the win there. Again, a fairly similar cast of characters, Magnus the Red and Araman, Infernal Master with the Athenaean Scrolls, that's the one that allows you to get an extra Kabbalistic ritual point, and it's also Sorcerer with Lord of Forbidden Law, and then this time there's a Terminator Sorcerer with a big squad of 10 Scarab Occult Terminators, taking the Umbralific Crystal to teleport them across the board for an Alpha Strike. Then there's 20 Rubik Marines, 2 squads of 5 and 1 squad of 10, they take Soul Reapers and Warp Flamers for the most part, one of the smaller squads of 5 takes the Bolters, and then there's a Mutalith Vortex Beast for a focal bit of shooting and heavy lifting, and a single squad of Zangor and Lighten with the bows. Even though they don't seem to be a staple in the majority of competitive lists, still cool to see Scarab Occult Terminators getting play. At 215 points per 5 of them, or 430 for 10, I would maybe say they're a little bit on the overcosted side versus things like rubrics. I feel like even a small points decrease would have them appearing in lists a lot more reliably. They're a big tanky Terminator unit that get minus 1 to wound, which they get innately with their squad sorcerer. And they're just generally fairly dangerous at range and melee, each one getting some AP-1 combi bolter shots, a couple of Soul Reaper cannons, and a couple of Hellfire missiles built into the unit as well. And then Mass Strength 5, AP-2, Damage 2 in close combat. A Terminator Sorcerer I think is fairly auto-include for the unit for the 115 points, do meaning that they are really quite a big pricey investment. He has his own shooting attack, another Terminator body with 5 wounds, and then gives them lethal hits and re-roll wound rolls of 1 against 1 marked target. Between all that, I think there's enough value to justify him there. They are interesting with their shooting damage dealing. Potentially, if you save up a bunch of command points, you can get some fairly monumental and crazy damage output out of them, stacking lots of buffs on psychic combi bolters and removing saves. At least in theory, land a unit that can threaten to delete almost any one single squad in the game, though it does consume an enormous amount of command points and cabalistic ritual resources. In any case, overall, I'd say that Thousand Sons aren't really in too bad a place in Warhammer 40k right now. It's just kind of nice to see Magnus being the powerhouse on the tabletop that he really wasn't in ninth, and Rubrics and Sorcerers very appropriately being the heart of the army. As always, let me know if you have any other thoughts or insights as to these lists that I've talked about. Let me know if I've missed anything important. If you'd like to see more like this, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, including new ones out just about every day. I'm sure I'll have more for the Thousand Sons at some point in the future. Finally, if you've been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all this content coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.